Hey guys, welcome to the next video of chair confirmations. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, ring flips. All right, all about ring flips. Now, this is a topic that a lot, confuses a lot of people when we're talking about cycle canes. So, I'm going to try to explain this um, as quickly as possible, obviously. And the videos after this, we can go through examples. All right. So, what exactly is a ring flip? Right. Well, the point, the thing about chairs is there's two ways to draw them. Okay. The difference between the two is that the axial will become that the axial in one chair will become equatorial and the equatorial becomes axial. But the up and down groups still remain that way. Okay? So what I did is I drew this little ring flipping diagram for you to show how the carbons change. So you can see that we have two different orientations for our chairs. And what I want you to kind of look at is look at carbon one. It's at this top right tip. All right. And what happens is it flips on this new one downward and uh, the atoms start, the numbering shifts. So you can see that this two is kind of in the middle here. And now it kind of shifts as a tip. And so what I would actually do on your index card is also include one of these little ring flipping diagrams with carbons numbered, if you can't remember it. Uh, so all it is is that if you want to redraw a ring flip this is how I would do it right you draw you know you, uh, you number everything three four five six now I draw the alternate confirmation and all you do is I focus on one atom I like to take carbon one I always keep that consistent of where I put it I always put it at the top right. So what I do is bring it down one. I'm going to put carbon one right there. And everything shifts with it. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And so that's how the ring flip works. All right. I hope that is a little bit clear. But we should definitely go through an example so that we can solidify it better. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this out for you guys. Some example here. So we have this cyclohexane with a methyl wedged. Methyl is coming at you. It's wedged. Um, and so, you know, we draw wedged up. So let's draw some ring. Oh, sorry, some chair. Not that one. Okay. Now again, number your ring. Two, three, four, five, six. Now remember, always be consistent. If you number clockwise, keep numbering clockwise on the chair. Now I, I've always had a habit of numbering my carbon one as this upright corner over here. Two, three, four, five, six. So now if you look at our little reference diagram, in that top right corner, the methyl, uh, the up group would be axial. So we just put an axial methyl right there. Now we can draw our other confirmation going through a ring flip. And so we do is draw the other version of the ring. And now let's before we do anything, what we do is we renumber. Okay. We're going to uh, shift the numbering down. So what we're going to do is um, take, actually in this case, I want to move it over because you can also number it that way. So all you do is you just take a corner. I always either take this corner or this corner. Now, if I'm looking at the molecule on the right, I for some reason um, have a habit of just taking this corner, bringing it up. Like you see, number two is now up over here. If I'm looking at the structure on the right, I take this and I bring it downwards. Whatever is your preference, does not matter. So that's uh, that's just my personal way of doing it. Uh, I find a good some habits to, uh, to just make some habits in Orgo because it makes some things a little bit easier, All right? And so like you can see in this case over here, I grabbed this corner circled in blue and shifted it downward like that, All right? So again, like in this case, I took two, brought it here. And so when you do that, you shift all the numbers over. 
So the two takes the place of the one, the one goes over to the left once and everything shifts to the left. Okay. Now what we do is we have to redraw our methyl. Now remember what I said about ring flips. The axial groups turn to equatorial, the equatorial groups turn to axial, but the up and down nature remains the same. Our methyl is axial, so we know it will become equatorial, but because it's up, it will stay up. So we put it at the carbon labeled one as equatorial up, which is that. All right? So that is what the ring flip looks like. Now, before we uh, finish this out, I want to just talk about one thing of cis and trans. All right, you guys will see a lot of that with regards to these rings of cis and trans. And so I want to just show you guys what that means in terms of these rings. So if I drew this ring and they gave me some two methyl substituents and I drew them uh, the cis conformation, they would have the same thing. They would be either all dashed or all wedged pointing in the same direction. doesn't matter what the two substituents were. I just picked methyls in this case. The trans version would look like this. One would be wedged, other dashed. You can see that they point in opposite directions. Right, okay, so that's what it means to be cis and trans on a cycloalkane. And again, it could be a substituent other than methyls. So how would we draw this in a ring? Let's draw this ring here. No, oh, sorry, the chair. And again, you can use a reference a diagram here, or go on your phone and pull out the Facebook Messenger app and just use that logo. Now we use number. So I'm going to write number one, two, three, four, five, six. Clockwise numbering one, two, three. Four, five, six. Carbon one had an had a wedge substituent, so we draw that up right over there. It's going to be axial, and on carbon two, it's going to be up again. Now equatorial. Now let me draw that a little bit more. Is it better? All right. So that is what our cis ring and cis chair would look like. What about the trans? Let's try to draw it in an alternate way, just again to, to get used to the fact that we can draw rings two ways, or with two orientations almost. So let's just number it like that. And so let's go counterclockwise numbering. Why not? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So on carbon one, um, actually, let me just change that up. Let me redraw that better. And let's just number actually like this, just to prevent any confusion. So on carbon one, we would be uh, up for our wedged methyl. And so we would draw this up right here. And then for our number two carbon, it would be dashed going down, right? And so remember how our reference diagram looks. When you have a up axial, the next carbon over the axial will be down, okay? And so if we have an up axial, carbon two, the next one is going to be down axial because this is how the equatorial groups look. You can see that it's alternating between down and up. Okay, and since on carbon one, we had an up group, we put it, uh, our wedge group, we put it up. And on carbon two, it's down. So again, we put it axial. Okay, so you can see that when they're trans, they are going to be both axial or both equatorial, but opposite in terms of up and down. Whereas in cis, 
they'll both be either up or both be down, but one would be axial, one would be equatorial. Okay, at least if they're neighboring. All right, yeah, if they're neighboring, that's the case. But the overall idea is that for cis uh, molecules, they will the both substituents you're talking about will be up, or both substituents you're talking about will be down. They don't necessarily have to be both. Uh, what do you call it? One axial, one equatorial. That's only the case if they're neighboring each other. But the up and down is what really matters. In the case of trans, one group will be up, one group will be down. Okay? So that is what you need to know. The cis and trans applies to up and down, not axial or equatorial. Do not get that confused. Okay? Uh, because you could easily have a substituent on this carbon on the left in blue that could be cis and what it would be if you look at our reference diagram here if we're talking about a cis where it's all up it would be now axial so they could both be axial if we eliminated this but you can see they're both up which is the case that which is what really matters okay so i hope this video helped you guys if something here didn't make sense please feel here please feel free to email me or go to the TA office hours. They're always there to help you guys. In the next videos, we'll be going through example questions that you may see on tests. All right, and I will see you guys later.